Will Pete Davidson face criminal charges? Why has JK Rowling upset Harry Potter fans once again? And what has Elon Musk done to humiliate himself on Twitter? Stick with me guys, I'm gonna answer all the questions in this video. First up, it looks like Pete Davidson might be facing criminal charges more than seven weeks after he crashed his car into a Beverly Hills home. According to sources in law enforcement, police only recently wrapped the investigation into the crash. The case is now being reviewed by the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office to determine whether or not Pete will be charged for the incident. We know that substances and alcohol were ruled out as factors in the crash, but Pete was traveling at a really high rate of speed. So it's possible that a reckless driving charge is on the table. On the 4th of March, the actor was driving with his girlfriend Chase Sue Wonders. He then jumped a curb, lost control of his Mercedes, and drove through someone's yard. He smashed into the corner of a house. The accident seemingly totaled his car, leaving the entire left bumper destroyed and shattering the driver's side window and front windshield. No one was injured in the crash, although there was a teen girl who was home alone at the time when his car went into the corner of her living room. Both Pete and Chase have since issued an apology to the family, and they decided not to sue. Photos from the incident show him looking exhausted while he was talking to police officers. He was wearing a hoodie and a blue jacket while talking to police and handing over some paperwork. So it was clearly a very messy situation for everyone involved. After a split from Emily Ratajkowski, Pete started spending a lot more time with Chase. In January, the actors were spotted together several times, including a lunch date in New York City and a trip to the Universal Studios in Los Angeles. Later that month, they went on vacation to Hawaii. Neither of them have immediately addressed their relationship status, but a source close to the stars has since spoken out about how they got together. They said Pete and Chase had insane chemistry on set, as well as when the cameras weren't rolling. They met last year on the set of the American slasher film Bodies, 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 where they had an on-screen romance. So what do we know about Chase? Case. While she graduated from Harvard University, where she majored in film studies and production. Even though she doesn't have many credits to her name, her career has slowly been picking up speed over the last couple of years. She started acting as a protagonist for the 2009 adventure movie A Trivial Exclusion. Apart from playing Emma in Bodies, 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 she's mostly known for starring as Riley in the American dramedy TV series Generation. When compared to Pete's previous girlfriends like Kim Kardashian and Ariana Grande, Chase is clearly a lot more private, but his relationship with her seems to be getting more serious these days. In fact, People Magazine reported that both of them were in upstate New York during Easter because Pete was thinking about purchasing a house, and apparently they were looking at homes in the area together. The couple have also hung out with Martha Stewart at her farm. Martha then posted a really cute photo of the three of them on Instagram. They were standing in front of her home and smiling. In the caption she wrote, They were looking at our beautiful town of Bedford. I showed them around the farm and inside the winter house where the Easter bunnies were getting ready for Sunday. Very cute couple. So clearly she approves of the two of them together. Even though Chase and Pete were said to have been dating since December, that hasn't stopped speculation of his next celebrity girlfriend. After he broke up with Emily Ratajkowski, several theories have started circulating around the internet as fans were trying to work out who he would be dating next. And some of these suggestions were downright ridiculous. So fans definitely need to chill with all the speculation because Pete is very clearly in a happy relationship. Okay, now what do you think about JK Rowling's latest comments? Earlier this month, Warner Brothers confirmed that they had ordered an original Harry Potter scripted series which will be released over a 10 year period, with each season based on one of the seven books. The show will also feature a brand new cast, the show is said to be a faithful adaptation of the beloved books, and it will feature a brand new cast of actors. The company also announced that JK Rowling will serve as the show's executive producer, which of course drew a lot of criticism online. When asked whether or not her involvement could impact the new show, the content head of Max and HBO tried to shut down the issue. He said, that's a very online conversation, very nuanced and complicated and not something we're going to get into. But those comments haven't stopped people from calling for a complete boycott of the show. In response to the growing controversy, JK Rowling posted a very sarcastic tweet, which made it seem like she really didn't care. She wrote, dreadful news, which I feel duty bound to share. Activists in my mentions are trying to organize yet another boycott of my work, this time of the Harry Potter TV show. As forewarned is forearmed, I've taken the precaution of laying in a large stock of champagne. Now, this is hardly the first time that Rowling has expressed her disdain for trans activists, so her tweet wasn't really all that surprising. But a lot of people seem to be asking the same question. Why would Warner Brothers make the decision to take her on as executive producer? Well, one user summed it up pretty well. They tweeted, I would imagine that the announcement of the TV show came on the back of the success of the recent computer game, with executives realizing that people do generally care more about having a Harry Potter game 
watching a Harry Potter TV show than trans people's human rights. Now that's pretty upsetting when you think about it, but it doesn't make it any less true. The release of Hogwarts Legacy in February this year prompted similar announcements of a boycott. The video game adaptation of Harry Potter brought about heated online debate because it was one of the first major projects released after Rowling came under fire for her comments. Even some of the developers who worked on the game ended up trying to boycott it for the same reason. Not only that, but a few of the voice actors in the game also tried to distance themselves from her views. Sebastian Croft, who voices one of the characters, released a statement saying, I was cast in this project over three years ago, back when all Harry Potter was to me was a magical world I grew up in. This was long before I was aware of JK Rowling's views. I'm really sorry to anyone hurt by this announcement. There is no LGB without the T. But looking back, it seems like all that noise might have been for nothing. The game instantly became a global success. It took only two weeks for it to sell 12 million copies, which is already wild. At the time, this drove $850 million in revenue, which made it the most successful Harry Potter game of all time. Now that number has soared even higher. According to the analyst, Hogwarts Legacy has since generated over $1 billion in revenue, and it seems unlikely that its success is going to slow down anytime soon. It was said to have sold 256% more times than predicted. Of course, JK Rowling was not directly involved with its development, but she still financially benefited from all the sales. And that's why there was such an issue with the game to begin with. So it's likely that Warner Brothers saw what happened with Hogwarts Legacy and decided to take their chances and work with her again for this new series. The controversy started in June of 2020 when the author posted a link to an article which used the phrase people who menstruate instead of the word women. It was this phrase that caught her attention and she felt the need to question it. Soon after, she posted a lengthy essay explaining her views on gender, but it didn't keep her from being cancelled on a massive scale and oust from Hollywood. To this day, the original cast of the Harry Potter franchise remain divided over her views on the trans community. Some of the more prominent actors like Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson have publicly denounced her comments. Daniel wrote an open letter to fans where he stated his belief that transgender women are in fact women. He said, any statement to the contrary erases the identity and dignity of transgender people and goes against all advice given by professional healthcare associations who have more expertise on this subject than either Joe or I. On the other hand, actors like Helena Bottom Carter and Ralph Fiennes came to her defense. Helena called for the backlash to end and said, she's allowed her opinion. Everyone carries their own history of trauma and forms their own opinions from that trauma. And you have to respect where people come from and their pain. You don't all have to agree on everything. That would be insane and boring. She's not meaning it aggressively. She's just saying something out of her own experience. For the most part though, Rowling doesn't seem to be too affected by the criticism, at least not on the surface. Since being canceled, she posted a series of sarcastic tweets where she basically insinuates that she's too rich to care about the controversy. In the three years since she first came under fire, Rowling has only doubled down on her opinion. So by this point, after the crazy success that was the Hogwarts legacy, it's getting more and more unlikely that she will ever decide to take back her comments and think about apologizing to her fans. All right, now have you been keeping up with all the chaos at Twitter? Elon Musk has had to backpedal once again over Twitter's verification policy, and he's decided to restore the blue tick free of charge to celebrities. Why? Well, because his plan kind of failed. The platform ended their old verification system on Friday the 20th of April, which is when they stripped all these celebrities of their legacy blue check mark. But this ended in disaster because Elon completely miscalculated just how many of them would be willing to pay for a subscription. Rather than agreeing to pay the fee, the overwhelming majority of them simply continued using the site even though they lost their blue check. According to The Guardian, fewer than 500 of the 400,000 legacy accounts actually signed up, and almost as many users cancelled their subscription at the same time. So basically no one who had an unpaid check mark before decided to pay for one even after the threat of losing it. So this whole thing has been a complete disaster. Probably in a last ditch effort to save himself from further embarrassment, Elon then decided to give heaps of celebrities their blue check mark back, just so it looks like they actually paid for it. On Saturday night, many accounts with more than 1 million followers were slapped with Twitter blue subscription badges. But what's really messed up is that even dead people got them too. For whatever reason, Musk or someone on his team decided to give them to accounts of Paul Walker, Anthony Bourdain, and Kobe Bryant, which almost seemed like a sick joke. Stephen King also spoke out about the fact that he still had a blue check mark. He wrote, my Twitter account says I've subscribed to Twitter blue. I haven't. My Twitter account says I've given a phone number. I haven't. And in response, Elon made it clear that he was the one paying for his account. In the, he replied by saying, you're welcome, namaste. But the best part of this chaos though is all the 
jokes that came from it. One person wrote, you can tell Twitter Blue is a good product because the only two ways to get it is to pay for it or make the owner of Twitter so mad that he buys it for you to punish you. Another person wrote, remember when Elon got booed on stage at Dave Chappelle and then stayed up all night melting down while pretending he wasn't mad about it? That's his life 24 seven now with Twitter Blue. So now that the blue check mark has lost all of its social credibility, it's become kind of embarrassing to even have one. This led to a slew of celebrities furiously denying that they paid for Twitter and trying to get rid of the check. Chrissy Teigen figured out that by changing her Twitter handle, she could somehow make it go away. And Lil Nas X also swore on his soul that he did not buy the subscription. It just randomly appeared on his account. It's really shocking just how many people felt the need to announce that they did not pay for that specific product. Not only that, but the fact that celebrities are the ones getting the verification for free while regular people are stuck paying has led to a lot of criticism. Elon himself criticized the old system by saying that there shouldn't be a different standard for celebrities, but now he's gone and done just that. The backlash has even led to a campaign called Block the Blue, which is where everyone who isn't paying for Twitter starts blocking blue subscribers on the site. To them, it seems like a pretty good way to clear up their Twitter feed because most of the people who paid for the subscription would probably be a supporter of Elon Musk. So why do you think this whole thing has backfired so badly? Let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you guys in the next video.